people, I'm not going to keep you forever because there's a lot of there's a lot of redundancy because we go over every one. You're never going to get uh, back to Celsius. So let's just let's just sum it up like this. The big thing I heard about was insurance. So tell us about insurance because there's two types of insurance. There's something that happens in the hot wallet, and there's also the insurance when you loan it out, which is the collateral that we talked about. So this yep. is this is what I have on my exchange and wallet fees, which I always list you guys. I always talk about it, but as far as insurance. Crypto at Celsius is insured. So there is a link I send everybody to. And it says here, Fireblocks and Prime Trust. Our custodians both provide insurance on assets. However, we generate interest rewards by lending out the assets to onboard partners. When these assets are lent out, they are not insured, which we talked about already. That's the whole thing with the collateral, making sure it's there. So the question then is, for insurance, in the beginning, we talked about cred and their model that just was not good at all. They had insurance, insurance is not gonna to touch them. So for insurance here for the hot wallet, how does that work? How much is it? Because like with the FDIC, it's $250,000, right? Yeah. For here in the situation, how does that work here at Celsius? Yeah, so so uh, Fireblocks, uh, I should update that site. Uh, Fireblocks insurance is $30 million uh, for the hot wallet, right? So if- For if, everything, yeah. For everything, right? So if money moves uh, inside that wallet and at that moment uh, a hacker or somebody jumps in and grabs it, the insurance company will pay up to $30 million, right? So so it covers the transition of the assets between our facilities or our cold storage and the customer or where the customer is, right? So, uh, and again, when, when you see other companies claim that they have 200 million insurance or 100 million insurance, those are only for cold wallet storage, right? So as long as, right. as, long as it's sitting in Gemini, uh, BlockFi has $100 million insurance. But if it lent it to an institution like we do, right. they don't have any insurance on it. So, so just understand that it's not, it's not that we have insurance and they don't or the other way around. Uh, uh, I think Celsius is the only company that has hot wallet insurance. And we don't have cold walled insurance because it doesn't mean anything. For at any moment, all of our assets are lent out. So why insure an empty wallet? Right. You know? okay. so, <laughs> so, and we state clearly on the side that when it's lent out, there is no insurance, right? You're relying on Celsius judgment uh, to make sure that we lent it to an institution that's going to return it. And as we stated several times, if something goes bad, we're going to go to our own pocket first. Look, I personally, I have over a hundred million dollars personally in the Celsius wallet sitting next to, if you have money with us, it's sitting next to your money. If you have BTC, it's sitting right next to my BTC. You have USDC, it's sitting right next to my USDC. So, so if, if, if we suffer a loss, I suffer the same loss pro rata with you, right? So, so I'm protecting myself just as much as I'm protecting you. And I, and I built Celsius for myself. It just happens that 230,000 people now use it as well. You know, so so I'm not I'm not on the other side of the trade, right? You you can call uh, Zach from BlockFi and ask him how much money does he have at BlockFi, right? He's not going to tell you a hundred million dollars, right? So or more. So I, I'm not bragging about the money. I'm just telling you that if if something happens to Celsius, that is a substantial loss for me. I can't just you know wipe it and and keep walking, right? So so we take this stuff very seriously and and. Uh, and because of that, uh, everything we put together, if you look at it and read it carefully, you will see that it is acting in your best interest. Right. Gotcha. And for the most part, like, like we, we talked about before, you know, it's not about it's there's a scam here, there's a scam there or whatever else. It, that's not how it is. It's just bad business. Bad business practices is what get, gets people in, uh, in real big trouble. It's not that people are, are purely evil or purely good. It's just one of those things. So sure, that makes make total sense. So the last thing. Well, you have to you have to worry about the scams and the bad business. Ugh. It's two. Yeah. It's two things you have to worry about. Yes. Yeah, we try to get rid of as many scams here as we possibly can because there are so many out there. And uh, I mean, in 2021, when a lot of the baby boomers are going to come in, which they are, what are they going to do? They're going to fall for these scams. Okay, Alex this is the last one. And we're gonna-